Oh yeah, we're styling this guy today. So every once in a while you'll come across a tree that leaves a deep and lasting impression on you. I remember during my time in Japan there were a handful of trees that were styled both at Fujikawa Kokan where I studied and from other nurseries and other professionals that really did leave a lasting impression on me as a bonsai professional. I always think of those trees when I'm designing plants now trying to achieve that same aesthetic. Well, here at ASAN today, we're going to be working on what I think is probably the largest bonsai in the United States, and one that has left a deep impression on me here in the U.S. Now, this particular tree is a one seed juniper. It was collected in the Four Corners area of New Mexico on private land by the owner of the land about five or six years ago. Now, this tree, like I said, I think is the largest bonsai in the United States, or at least the largest one that I know of. So we're gonna be redesigning or restyling this tree with those aesthetics from Japan in mind. So I'm hoping that this tree becomes kind of an inspirational tree for a lot of you guys out there. Not only because it's an absolutely massive tree, but the deadwood characteristics are fantastic. The foliage is beautiful. And if we play our cards right, we're gonna turn this into, I think, one of the best bonsai in the United States. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Okay, so you might recall this tree from an episode that we did on YouTube about a year and a half ago entitled the 800 pound bonsai, where we took this tree out of its original wooden box, we built a gantry crane above it, hoisted the tree up, worked on the root system, and then lowered it back down into this ceramic container. Well, in that year and a half interim, we've done basically nothing to the tree other than heavily fertilize it and water it. And as you can see, it's put on a ton of growth during that period. Now, in this episode, we're gonna be redesigning the branch structure on the tree, styling it out, applying wire to it, creating a padded appearance to it, and we're also gonna be building a brand new apex on this plant. When this tree originally arrived at ASAM, it had no apex on it. So over the last couple of years, I've been growing one single shoot out up at the top. It's extended, I guess, about three and a half or four feet up above the original height of the tree. So now we're gonna be able to take that, bend it, put it into position, and create a brand new apex that connects the front foliage of the tree to the rear foliage of the tree and gives us one nice, concise primary line from the base of the plant all the way to the top. So as always, we're gonna start at the bottom of the plant, work our way towards the top, and build that brand new apex. So at this stage, all I'm doing is cleaning out the crotch growth and the underside growth. The primary structure is actually already pretty well established on this tree because I did apply wire to it about three years ago when it initially arrived at ASAN. So at this stage, just basic cleaning, repositioning of the branches by rewiring them, and then we're gonna cut back the length of the profile here to give us a nice concise look. So over the last couple of years, some of these branches on the tree that were initially part of the design have gotten overly elongated and too thick. So this branch down here in the front is one such branch. Now anytime that I'm dealing with coniferous material, particularly when I'm working with junipers, every branch I cut off I'm going to turn into a jean, which is a deadwood branch. We're going to actually incorporate it as a feature into the tree. So this branch actually has a lot of really nice ramification to it. So I'm gonna cut out towards the end here and then we're gonna strip the bark back and add this in as a little feature. It might be a little bit loud for the tree, so we might end up shortening it back or removing a majority of it later. But for the time being, I'd rather keep it intact because sometimes it adds a little character in certain areas of the tree. So I mentioned earlier that this tree was collected on private land by the owner of that land out in the Four Corners area of New Mexico. Now anytime I post a video here on YouTube about collected trees, or what we refer to as Yamadori in the bonsai world, we get a lot of interesting comments and feedback from people. Some people are totally accepting of it, some people find it morally outrageous that a tree like this would be collected out of the mountains, put in a bonsai pot, and then turned into a work of art. 
So for me personally, I understand both sides of the coin here, but as a bonsai professional, this is really the pinnacle of what we're looking for when we're creating bonsai art. Our goal is to try to create the oldest looking tree possible. And if we can already have that age built into the plant, we're that much better off. So this particular tree, where it was located out in the desert in New Mexico, it was struggling. I mean, look at the dead wood characteristics on this tree. That doesn't happen if you do it by hand. It's got to be nature made. So this is hundreds and hundreds of years of the elements, the wind, the sun, the rain, everything beating this tree down to create this really interesting twisted dead wood on the plant. So out in that environment, the tree is struggling. It's barely surviving. But our goal is to take that tree from that location, put it in a bonsai container and give it the opportunity to thrive. So the amount of growth that was put on on this tree in I think it was five or six years since it was collected is tremendous. It would never have put on this amount of growth out in its natural environment. So our goal is to provide it the necessary water, the fertilization, the perfect environment here to make sure that again it thrives and stays alive in perpetuity. All right, so next up we're going to be wiring this tree up and creating a padded appearance to the branch structure. Now, one reason that I love 1C junipers here in the States so much is because the foliage is actually really, really nice. If you've worked with any of our other native US juniper species here, like Rocky Mountain junipers, for example, or California junipers, the foliage can be quite a bit unruly and difficult to work with. Whereas the one seed foliage, we can wire it up, position it, prune it back properly over the course of a couple of years and get a very padded and full appearance in a, an incredibly short amount of time. So I expect this tree to be fully padded out and look really nice within say two growing seasons from now. We'll actually be able to get six full flushes of growth during those two growing seasons fill the tree back in and give it a really nice full and exhibition ready appearance. Now, when I say exhibition ready, obviously this tree still weighs probably 600 pounds. So I doubt it will ever be taken to a show. We have to move it with a bobcat here at the nursery. So to get it into an exhibition would be about impossible. But in any case, it's in a prime location here in the nursery. Right when you walk in, you can see it at the far end of the garden. So in that regard, it's on exhibition at all times here at Ace AM. So without further ado, let's jump into the wiring process on this tree. So I mentioned at the beginning of this episode that there were a couple of trees in Japan that really inspired me as bonsai. One of those in particular was this, I guess you could call it kind of bunjin or literati style Shinpaku Juniper that was designed by Shinji Suzuki. Now something about this tree just speaks to me. It's absolutely gorgeous, you know, totally settled in the pot. The branches just seem to be all in the right spot. It's got kind of a naturalistic but refined look to it. And it's an aesthetic that I've always admired and I've always tried to achieve in the trees that I build as well. Now, you know, mimicking that particular style is nearly impossible, I think, but it's a goal to sort of strive for, in my opinion. Now, another tree at Fujikawa Koken, where I studied as an apprentice that inspired me, was also a Shinpaku Juniper. This is actually a Sonare, or a Percumbens, that was collected in the Japanese Alps and then grafted with Itoigawa foliage. So this particular tree, obviously much more powerful, much heavier in appearance than the previous juniper that we just looked at. But it's another one that inspired me, not only because of the character in the trunk and the softness of the foliage, but there was this one gin that actually hung down underneath the tree. And the fact that that tiny thin gin had survived all this time out in the mountains and then subsequently in a bonsai pot was pretty inspirational to me. You know, the fact that people had maintained and cared for this tree for so many decades without breaking that particular gym. I was on edge working on this tree as an apprentice. So I just thought I'd show you guys a couple of the trees that inspired me in Japan. Of course, there are many, many others over the years that I both saw in person and got to work on as an apprentice.
All right, so the final thing we're working on here on our big monster juniper at ASAN is the apex. Now I mentioned earlier that when the tree arrived here at ASAN, there was no apex on the tree. So over the last couple of years, I've been growing out this shoot here so that we can bend it into position. So what we're gonna be doing here is putting some heavy duty wire on this. We've got size six and size four that we're applying to this. We're gonna bend it backwards into position and the actual top of this shoot right now that technically is the apex is actually going to become a side lateral branch and all of these side lateral branches here are going to become the new apex. So as I build this out, I'll show you exactly what I mean. Alright, so here is our giant one seed after its secondary styling with the brand new Apex. Now as you can see, the Apex looks a little bit small on the tree. That's to be expected this go around, so we didn't really have a whole lot to work with. But you can see the concept of taking a really tall branch like that, laying it down so the Apex, or the original Apex, becomes a side lateral branch, and the smaller side lateral branches now become the rounded top. Now over the course of this next year, we should be able to get three full flushes of growth on this tree. So come fall of 2022, the tree should have nearly three times the amount of density on it. Looks a little bit sparse right now, but again, that's to be totally expected at this stage. You know, when you're designing a bonsai, it's meant to be designed as kind of a snapshot in time. So this isn't the final result. This isn't what I'm looking to accomplish long-term with this tree. This is just one step in that long-term process. So I understand that you guys might think it looked even better before we started. It was a lot fuller at that point. But like I said before, in about a year from now, it'll have three times as much density, be completely filled in, and we will do an update video on this tree at that particular time. So I wanna thank you guys for checking out this episode. Look forward to seeing all of you guys next time around. And until then, take care. Mm -hmm.